YouTube, Mark here with another fragrance review. This time let's delve into the designer house of Calvin Klein CK. Let's take a look at this one right here, this one called Euphoria Intense for Men. Now Calvin Klein of course is an American designer brand which is well known across the world. Um, in the men's section I would say CK is known more for their clothing brand. Of course uh, back in the 90s their jeans used to be hot men's jeans and uh, again iconic underwear um, they're really known for their undergarments who would have known um, that's probably their best selling product in the men's section now for what for myself when I see that iconic CK logo this one right here that's on CKB CK1 when I see that CK logo it brings me back to the 90s and I really think that's a downfall for the brand um, I really think that it takes me back to the good old 90s and the brands having a hard time reconnecting with uh, with us, of course, the ones that were in the 90s that used to wear CK1, CKB, they're really having a hard time reconnecting with those consumers and new consumers that are, of course, in their teens now. The brand's really having a hard time with these new releases. Um, CK first started in the fragrance game with the now discontinued Calvin back in 1981. Um, the 80s and 90s CK saw its best years, to be honest, uh, with, of course, CK1, CKB, Obsession, Eternity, um, even Escape to some, some extent. Escape wasn't really a good seller. Now with Cody on board with Calvin Klein licensing this brand, the 2000s Calvin Klein really is releasing more flops than the Los Angeles Clippers. Yes, an NBA reference. If you guys know NBA, you'll know, you'll laugh at that one. Nice little NBA joke right there. Now the flops in the 2000s, hey, CK free, CK into you for him and all its flankers. Um, the numerous CK1 flankers also, CK Crave and Truth, really weren't sellers. Um, they weren't really popular in the fragrance community. Um, these fragrances, just in the 2000s, Calvin Klein's missing something. Now, CK heard rumblings that the original Euphoria and how weak it was, and they really wanted to tinker with it and release an intense version. Now, are we going to see uh, a more intense version of the original with this guy? is what of course the public wanted or different juice with the same longevity and projection problems let's get to the review and i'm gonna let you guys know the ins and outs of euphoria intense for men let's go all right guys time to tackle presentation for calvin klein's euphoria intense for men let's take a look at the bottle and the box and of course here on the robes 08 channel we're going to tackle box first now you take a look at this uh, box it's got like a brown, dark brown, um, rose gold hue to the box with a white line coming across it to give it, you know, some depth to it. Um, this is all embossed, by the way, the name of the fragrance and the CK down here is embossed. And um, you got some information at the back of the box and some at the bottom, and that's it. Um, nothing too crazy right here. Now, taking a look at the bottle, Calvin Klein bottles as a whole, as a brand, um, I feel most of them are, you know, not so great. Some of them are actually kind of tacky, you know, going for the younger age groups. This one right here is probably one of their nicest bottles as far as presentation goes. It's kind of got like that stained uh, brown glass here. And uh, with the metal parts here, with the cap and of course the sprayer, it has like a rose gold hue to it. So very nice rose gold actually kind of in right now. So very, very nice. I wouldn't be ashamed to have this on, on uh, my dresser. Now let's take a look at the cap. It, it does have some weight to it, of course, with the metal and uh, loads of plastic in the middle. And uh, this right here, uh, of course, you got the sticker at the bottom. Um, right here, the metal doesn't go all the way around the bottle, as you can see here. Um, so if you have it like in a bag or something, it might get stuck to clothes or something, and, and it might actually rip off. It's not really glued very well on here. So if you're rough on your present or on your, on your bottles, just an FYI. Now the sprayer itself, it's one of those that actually sprays like a laser. It doesn't spray much, but it sprays exactly where you're going. Let's take a look at it. Let's spray this sucker. And as you can see, it's got that laser thing going on. So this is presentation for Calvin Klein Euphoria Intense for Men. Let's go to the review. Let's tackle bottle sizes. Euphoria Intense for Men comes in the standards. 1.7, 3.4 ounce bottles. You're looking at a 3.4 ounce right here. Pricing, give or take, $35 to $70 American. Again, Calvin Klein's basically available everywhere you go. Um, your nearest discounter will have these available. And uh, shop around and you'll probably get this at a discount. Now this one, if you didn't know, is a flanker of the original Euphoria for Men. 
Uh, this one hit the shelf back in 2008, has not hit any of my top 10 list as of yet. Group the Sudden Oriental Woody Fragrance. Pet Fumiers, there's two. Um, there's Carlos Benim, which uh, actually did um, Liquid Night, which is uh, from A Lab on Fire, which is getting a lot of love right now with the YouTube community. Um, of course, the original uh, Eternity for Men uh, for Calvin Klein, and the original Euphoria Men also for men and women, actually, and Polo Blue. So he's known for some fragrances, uh, really a lot of designer fragrances, and of course, Liquid Night. And the other Pet Fumiers, Lock Dom. Um, he has done nothing that I would say is in the men's section that is worthwhile to say. Recommended age for Euphoria Intense for men. I would say high schoolers. This is up. This is up your alley, boys. High schoolers, right up to I would say 35 year old men. I would say like that. You know, like high schooler and college kid, and you can wear it until your your 30s. I think this is a, a good fragrance for that age range. How many sprays and wear for Intense? Um, I go one on the chest my usual, and then two on the neck. I don't go too much. Um, I didn't really feel like putting more of this fragrance really helped out. Um, so I go one on the chest, two on the neck, and I'm set. Three sprays. Um, I would also recommend to spray this on a shirt. Um, if you want a little more longevity with this fragrance, go ahead, spray your collar of your shirt. Usually I do that. Um, and the cuffs at, at the end right here. You're good to go. Now, Let's take a look at our notes. Let's delve into the notes with this one. Top notes, so we got some ginger and we got some pepper. In the mid, we got cedar, vetiver, sage, black basil. And in the, mid, in the base, we got mir, oud, patchouli, amber, and labdanum. Um, yeah, very interesting base, as you can see. Mir, oud, patchouli, amber, labdanum. Ooh, some of my favorite notes in here. Let's sniff out this fragrance, and I'm gonna tell you guys what this fragrance smells like. All right guys, time to sniff out Euphoria Intense for Men. I'm gonna let you guys know what this fragrance smells like from top to bottom. I'm gonna do initial spray on my skin right now and uh, remind me of this uh, top note from Euphoria. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, this uh, brings me back. All right, what do you smell? Initial sniff, sweetness, fruit. Uh, right off the bat, intense sweetness, guys. If you don't like sweet fragrances, this probably isn't for you. It might be a little too much for your nose. The sweetness gives me kind of like a synthetic berry-like vibe. Strawberry, watermelon-like vibe. Um, and it instantly made me think of this fragrance right here. Black Excess from Paco Rabanne. Yes, this introduction, almost exactly alike. Now we gotta figure out uh, which one's worth purchasing, this one or Black Excess, I'm gonna let you guys know. Now, I'm gonna go back to the introduction of this, let you guys know what it smells like. You can detect a good wallop of ginger at the start also, which is kind of different. There's a slight pinch of pepper, not too much for anybody to really notice and hate or love this fragrance for it. Um, the pepper is really more in the background. The main factor in Euphoria Intense, would have to be the introduction, would have to be your sweet synthetic fruit in here that reminds people sometimes of cough syrup. It will remind you perhaps of candies. Um, now CK, I actually wanted to see what CK thought about this introduction. They say there's a raindrop accord in here and I'm like, what are you guys talking about? They describe it as a honeydew melon flavored hard candy and I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, there's some reviewers saying that, yeah, that's true. And I do get this in this fragrance. Right when they told me that, a honeydew melon flavor? Yeah, you're right. So this is where some people are gonna say it smells like candy, Jolly Rancher, or something like that. Yeah, CK, right on, right on the bat, right on the score with this one. This intro will be a huge winner for sweet tooth type of fragrance lovers, kind of like myself, gourmand lovers perhaps, and younger noses alike, definitely. This top note's gonna be like sold for a lot of people. And then other people, eh, you don't have a sweet tooth, you don't like these type of fragrances, eh, stay away. Um, it, it just might hit your nose in a bad way. Let's go into the mid, let's see how it de develops on my skin. These CK fragrances usually don't have a lot of longevity, so they usually don't give you much after that top note. In the mid, once this fragrance dries down in the heart, the sweetness turns the volume down, down quite a bit actually. It starts getting a little more masculine, a little drier also. You can feel some of these herbal notes that are coming out. They're peeking through, but not much. It was actually perfect for me. Sometimes herbal notes and fragrances, 
They just don't mesh with me. I'm on this one, perfect. The amber at some points of this fragrance is center stage, giving this fragrance kind of like a vanilla-like tone in the mid and of course in the base. Um, it really meshed really well with this introduction. The Cedar Vetiver combo, I believe, carries this fragrance for the rest of the life of it. I really didn't smell much vetiver or cedar, of course, in the start. It was just sweetness, a huge sweet blast, and really just big cloud that didn't really smell any woodiness. Um, in this mid, I smelled a little bit of cedar and vetiver, and it just tones it down, and it'll be there for the rest of the life of the fragrance. This part has people saying that it smells kind of like dark chocolate, and I can tell what people are saying in a way. I detect a faint smell of it. I would not say this has a huge chocolate note in here. I, I, it was really hard to pinpoint to be honest. It was really faint and it was really not the main theme of this heart, unfortunately. I did though receive a small suede-like feel. This is from the labdanum coming in. Overall, solid heart and it carries this fragrance well into the base. Now let's get into the base. The main factor missing from this base that really popped into my head was the oud. Where's the oud? <laughs> Where's the oud? I never detected any of it at any part of this fragrance. There's no oud in this fragrance at all. Any users thinking of, or people thinking of getting this fragrance, hey, there's oud in this, I'm gonna try it. my first oud-based fragrance. No, you're gonna be disappointed, you're not gonna smell it, you don't even know what the hell you're, you're smelling. There's no oud in this. The base gave me a typical spicy, almost woody, Ending. Now the woody, you're saying, oh, there's there, there's wood, maybe that's the oud. No, again, the wood was more of a mix of that cedar vetiver combo, more than oud, to be honest with you guys. There's there no oud I detected in this fragrance at all. The mirror showed its face in the midway part of this fragrance. It did a nice job to man this fragrance up just a little bit, um, but not a huge player in this fragrance. Now let's get to the overview, and I'm going to let you guys know what I think of Euphoria Intense for men. Welcome to the overview of Euphoria Intense for Men by Calvin Klein. My two cents on this fragrance. The main player in Euphoria Intense would have to be the sweetness. It was the prominent accord in this whole fragrance and it is going to be the main factor why people would either love this fragrance or hate it. Again, another fragrance that could really fool you with its notes and grouping. You gotta be careful if you're looking at a note breakdown of a fragrance and of course it's grouping. It's a borderline oriental woody fragrance. It wasn't really that in your face. The notes would make you think that this was a darker fragrance, but that's not the case. Um, it can make a case of being almost semi-gourmandish. Um, definitely sweetness, this one. Now this fragrance right here, personally, I felt it was made more for nightlife and casual use at the same time. Going to play pool with the boys, going bowling, going out for dinner, etc, etc. It can be worn in the club, but you might be lost in the shuffle with the lack of power of this fragrance. These type of fragrances need power to go into the club. They need projection and longevity. They need to go beast mode, boys. This thing, it's weak. You're going to get lost in the shuffle. Angel Men, Le Mans, 1 million. 10 sprays of 1 million is going to crush this guy. <laughs> Nobody's going to smell you. It's a solid choice for a starter or high school set. I really think this one would work well on a younger man. High schoolers, this is for you. Comparing this to the original, let's compare it to the original Euphoria. My personal opinion is I'd rather wear this than the actual original. If you smell the original, and they do have some similar notes if you smell the original, but overall they're not close in scent. So, Perhaps if you hate the original, you may like this one. Um, there is some other notes in this fragrance that, that makes it a little different. Um, this one I would say is much darker than the original. So don't hesitate to check this one out if you felt the original was a little too safe for you. The original was more of a daytime scent for me, like a workday scent. And this one is more like a, a night out, nighttime scent. Um, a little more interesting to be honest but both lack in the performance side of things and Calvin Klein is known for performance issues. What I'm talking about is projection and longevity. Most of their fragrances just don't last. It would make probably my top 10 Calvin Klein releases of all time for men. Again, I'm not a huge Calvin Klein fan. Since I put them into the safe mainstream brands like Hugo Boss, Tommy Hilfiger, um, 
I would be hard pressed to make a top 10 list for, for these type of brands. Um, so for me, it will probably make my top 10 for Calvin Klein. Very interesting scent, um, solid actually. Now, for this type of fragrance, I felt the overall performance was really lacking. Projection, longevity are the bread and butter of a fragrance like this. You know, these, these sweet gourmandish fragrances uh, like this with that introduction. Um, Euphoria Intense was really weaker than most of fragrances in this genre. And I would hardly call this an intense version of a fragrance. Why would you hate this fragrance? Well, the sweetness, of course. Uh, that big, bold sweetness uh, that you're getting right off the bat. Yeah, um, it doesn't really go away. Like the sweetness is more like a fruity sweetness at the start, and then like a vanilla-like sweetness um, in the back end of the fragrance. So eh, that might hurt you. Synthetic-wise, yeah, um, probably also cloying. Um, it could be cloying to other people. Longevity problems, yeah. Um, if you're looking for a club banger, this ain't it. Um, also, kind of juvenile in a way. You know. It, it's it's not too juvenile it's not like sugary sweet but it has some sweetness to it and I could say I could really see somebody saying now this is for younger guys I could see that one word to describe this fragrance would have to be sweet uh, bottles uh, definitely again I'm gonna bring out my black excess um, this is very comparable to this one so test them both out as far as um, both these fragrances you know going head to head I would say they're pretty freaking close, guys. Um, you can go either way. Um, I really have, I think, better uh, longevity and projection with this one, but it was a, a close call as far as uh, as both these fragrances go. So I would recommend it as black accessor, this one, for bottles. Um, it's in the same genre as a Givenchy Play Intense or a Rocha Man, you know, like semi-gourmandish fragrances. Um, they don't smell like... Of course, it doesn't smell like Givenchy Play Intense or Rocha Man, but check those out if you're into this fragrance. Um, best time to wear this fragrance, again, like I said earlier, a night out, uh, fun day, you know, going to play pool, you know, something like that, night out. Um, compliment factor. I looked around online to see compliment factor for other people. Um, actually, they got a lot more than what I did with this guy. To be honest, the compliment factor with this one was middle of the road. Um, I really didn't get anything like panty dropper or amazing uh, compliment factor with this one. Again, the longevity and projection is not that great with this guy. And um, I really think that um, mid. Um, nothing outstanding as far as the compliment factor goes. My two cents for CK Euphoria Intense for Men. It is one of the better CK releases in the new 2000 branded Calvin Klein brand. Uh, you know, you got CK One Shock that's actually pretty good. Other than that, in the 2000s, it's lacking. So this is actually a solid release, and I liked it. They did well with this one. I really liked this one, but I think I got a little more project pro pro production out of Black Excess. So they're kind of really the same as far as fragrance goes as smell. Um, and I think I, I get a little bit more from this guy, and that's why I would choose this one over this one, to be honest with you guys. Um, they're very close, and I think CK beats it out just slightly in every category. It's solid from the house, but not the home run that Calvin Klein really wanted uh, to revamp their whole men's line. And this is not going to be, uh, you know, their saving grace, I would say. So this goes from buy, try, or pass. Euphoria Intense for Men is a definite try. I really wasn't blown away from this one, but it is actually solid. So sniff it out. Let's get to the rating system and see how it does against the rest. See ya, YouTube. All right, guys. Let's rate CK Euphoria Intense for Men. Projection longevity, eh, kind of middle of the road. Um, they get uh, seven bottles out of ten for projection. Uh, mid to low longevity again six bottles out of ten uh, mid to low you, you're getting three to six hours give or take i'm looking for a little more for uh, this type of fragrance versatility this one gets seven bottles out of ten not bad but i really just wear it for casual use in the nighttime overall smell eight bottles out of ten smells nice um that's your typical ck smells good seasons i would say mainly for fall spring and winter it's a good night out scent for casual use it has that typical ck performance issues and it smells good but you can do better for your cash overall score i'm giving this one a seven bottles out of ten a solid release from ck